Hello everyone, this is Ivan again and uh, I would like to introduce you a little bit about filtering of airplane trajectory with a tool of MATLAB. Uh, previously we had talked uh, about importance of filtering process in aviation and uh, yes, it is true because uh, uh, airplane it is highly dynamic object and uh, we do not have possibility to measure uh, coordinates of airplane by different sensors many times. That's why only one that we have uh, applying specific filtering uh, algorithms which can uh, help us to reduce noise influence. And uh, quite important in filtering this is model of airplane movement. And in most cases we need to consider like alpha, beta, gamma filtering uh, with uh, uh, acceleration of airplane. However, in some linear, uh, linear parts of airplane trajectory we can use alpha, beta filter. And uh, if you talk about en road phase or uh, data processing of airplane at the enrolled stage. Uh, in this case, alpha beta filter can be used, uh, and uh, the errors of alpha beta filters will be suitable for uh, solving such kind of task. In most cases, any surveillance data processing system includes three main stages of data processing. At the first level of data processing, we use uh, sensors, which can measure particular distances, angles, and finally provide us uh, airplane coordinates. It may be uh, polar coordinates, like distance and angle. Uh, it can be latitude and longitude and altitude of airplane, or it can be X, Y, and Z in Cartesian reference frame. In mass we have uh, a lot of formulas which help us to transform between polar to Cartesian, from Cartesian to the uh, spherical coordinate system, and then vice versa. That's why at the initial first level of data processing we've got coordinates of airplane, and that's all. Second or middle level of data processing it includes uh, identification of airplane trajectory and measuring parameters of this trajectory. Uh, of course, if you talk about uh, ground facility of ATC, uh, we need to talk about airplane trajectory detection. And if you uh, consider civil application, we use uh, secondary surveillance radar and uh, ADS-B data. In this case, each me measurement or each coordinate of airplane is accompanied with the identification code of airplane. If it is secondary surveillance radar, uh, we use uh, ATL code of airplane, which is transmitted in the uh, mode S reply. And uh, with the help of this code, this ICAO code of airplane is uh, uniquely for each transponder of airplane. And it gives possibility to uh, like grab all the points from previous observation, now and all other observation together to get uh, the whole airplane to the same uh, situation if you use uh, ADSB data, because also in mode uh, 1090 extended speeder uh, we have position report of airplane, and inside of this report we have got ICAO identification code and airplane coordinates. However, these coordinates uh, are measured on board of airplane. However, in both of these cases we've got uh, identification codes of airplane. If we consider primary surveillance radar, 
In this case, we've got only four arguments. Uh, and we don't know uh, identification of these coordinates. And at the second level of data processing, we need to identify particular coordinates of airplane with the previous coordinates of airplane. And uh, to do that, we use specific algorithms which use uh, extrapolated data uh, and uh, measured data to compare and to uh, detect uh, airplane trajectory. That's why it is uh, like uh, first uh, task of uh, second stage of data processing. Identification of airplane trajectory. If you've got a sequence of airplane trajectory, which will be end uh, with uh, current airplane information. Then we can estimate parameters of trajectory. And the first parameter, which is quite important, it is airplane velocity. Then airplane acceleration, and uh, third parameters, it is heating angle. That's why three main parameters we should uh, measure uh, if we know airplane trajectory. Thus, velocity, acceleration, and heating angle. Uh, next, and probably that's all for second level of data processing. Next, uh, we've got third level of data processing. In this case, we use different airplane trajectories because We've got airplane trajectories from the second stage. And at the highest third level of data processing, we mix different sources of trajectories to obtain more precisely airplane trajectories. Third level of data processing, uh, also called like multi sensor data processing, when we mix uh, different trajectories or different coordinates of airplanes together to improve performance of uh, surveillance data. Okay, and uh, today I would like to focus you in a uh, second level of data processing and uh, we will try to improve performance of uh, radar system with the help of alpha beta filter and uh, we will try to answer um, quite interested, uh, interesting question about could we use al alpha beta filter for filtering real airplane trajectory or we need to use alpha beta gamma filter and in which condition we can use alpha beta filter instead of alpha beta gamma filter. Okay, and uh, let's start. Okay, uh, thus uh, let me uh, introduce you a little bit alpha beta filter and then uh, I will switch to MATLAB and we will try to code alpha beta filter. You will create your own uh, software for evaluate uh, different uh, airplane trajectories and then uh, we will answer our questions. Thus, first of all, how it works? Uh, Okay, um, I would like to repeat a little bit that uh, alpha beta filter we can use only for case of constant velocity, which means zero acceleration. And uh, idea of alpha beta filter uh, can it, uh, is the following. Uh, if we consider a particular airplane coordinate, for example, x, it may be y, it may be z. In some cases, it can be latitude and longitude, why not? And uh, here we've got time of measuring. And uh, during the first time of measuring, t1, 
we've got only measurement, measurement x1 measured me. And uh, measurements will be indicated by yellow stars. Uh, and probably that's all. At the next time of measuring, in time t2, we also got measuring of particular parameter x uh, measured. It will be second value. However, in this case, we can estimate velocity. Because we know time difference and we, we know difference in parameter. Uh, if we can estimate velocity by particular axis, or component of velocity by x, we can extrapolate future airplane location at time t3. If we can extrapolate, yeah, uh, we can do it quite easily, uh, thus uh, x extrapolation is equal x uh, previous filter plus velocity multiply with the time period between t3, t3 and t2. Uh, then we've got measured value at t3, it is start, start. Thus extrapolated value it is uh, blue circle and uh, yellow star it is measured value. And uh, we can easily get filtered value because filtered value will be between extrapolated and measured value. And we use alpha coefficient to uh, to divide this uh, difference at particular percentage. Thus, alpha it is coefficient which divide uh, this difference between measured and extrapolated values um, in particular percentage. Thus, red square it is a filtered value. And uh, alpha coefficient usually at first uh, has uh, quite valuable values. Okay, maximum alpha is equal to 1 because it is coefficient like 100%. And uh, next it will be uh, reduced up to 0 in the 0 side. And uh, at the initial stage, uh, this difference and filtered value will be closer to the measured value because uh, our extrapolation is not uh, is not accurate. And uh, like in um, 20, 30 uh, steps of alpha beta filtering, uh, filtered value will be relocated closer to extrapolated value because our extrapolation becomes uh, more, more accurate. That's why we will improve trust for our extrapolation. Thus, uh, in the, like, two words, filtering, it means extrapolation and then finding the uh, filtered value between extrapolated and measured data. That's why it's like uh, math uh, like math algorithm which uh, help us to reduce errors of uh, measuring in any sensors. And of course we need to apply alpha beta filter separately for each uh, uh, axis for, for each data. And uh, if you talk about formulas, extrapolated value we can count by this simple linear prediction of movement. Then uh, filtered value will be equal extrapolated value plus alpha coefficient multiplied with the difference between measured and extrapolated data. And uh, at each step, we will need to 
uh, apply guidance by velocity. Thus, velocity we need to recalculate as following. With the help of beta coefficient. That's why we've got alpha beta filter. Because alpha coefficient uh, operates in a particular value side. And beta operates or guide in velocity side. And uh, then we will continue. Uh, then we will use measured and uh, filtered value to get next extrapolation. Then we've got measured value. Then we've got filtered value. Then we've got extrapolated value, got measured value, and got filtered. And then we will continue this pro process until we will not uh, reach final point of our uh, trajectory tracking. Alpha and beta coefficients are the following, and we will use case 1 to get uh, uh, alpha and beta coefficient calculation. Yeah. And uh, mostly I would like to stop at the following algorithm of alpha beta filtering filter and uh, actually next uh, I would like to show you how to code this algorithm and how to work uh, with alpha beta filter to filter particular data. Okay, thus this is uh, our alpha beta filter algorithm and uh, here we've got three main stages of alpha beta filter operation. Uh, at the first step, we just get a filtered value as measured value. At the second stage, we count first velocity. And beginning from the third stage, we need to apply all formulas uh, for filtering uh, our data. Thus, uh, now I would like to switch to MATLAB and we will try to practice a little bit in MATLAB. Uh, okay, first of all, I will run MATLAB. Sorry, I've got something. Clear, clear all. Okay. And uh, where's my okay. text editor? That's why we will do everything in script. That's why you, you will also. Uh, do uh, my coding in parallel, and uh, finally we got particular the same results. As you know, we are working in uh, editor, and uh, in my current folder I've got only surveillance data processing file SDPM. It will be our uh, main file in our software. Thus, first of all, uh, if you remember, we need to prepare our uh, MATLAB environment for uh, our further computation. Thus, we will apply CLC, uh, then uh, clear VARS, and close all. You know, I, I like uh, building a lot of graphs uh, for visualization of results. That's why close all uh, is very useful because we can just shut down all the figures that we have. And uh, in our software, uh, we will uh, try to play with the two uh, cases. Uh, at the first time, we will try to uh, simulate airplane movement, then we apply errors, then we apply alpha beta filter, and then we will try to see how errors will be reduced by using alpha beta filter. In particular, like case. And uh, at the second stage of our code, I would like to get a real airplane trajectory from ADSB database. 
uh, and then we try to apply alpha beta filter filtering software uh, for filtering uh, real airplane trajectory. And then we will see uh, our outcomes uh, which uh, show how we can use it for particular cases. Thus, first of all, let's uh, try to think how we can uh, simulate a true airplane trajectory. Uh, I don't want to uh, introduce like quite complicated uh, models of airplane. Thus, uh, I just uh, create uh, x variable, which will be uh, changed from 1 to 300. Uh, then uh, I will set up time period t in between measurements. Uh, in my case, uh, for first study, uh, let uh, have like periodical measurements with the frequency, particular frequency, and uh, I will have one measurement per each six seconds. That's why six seconds it will be time between measurements. And uh, then uh, I can build sequence of uh, measuring time. It will be matrix T, like time. Uh, we will begin from first second with the step of T up to the uh, T multiplied with the number of elements in matrix X. Okay, I think it, it makes sense. That's why X, it will be our true parameter. Then it will be matrix of time of measuring of this X sequence and uh, then let's simulate uh, some noise in this data. Uh, thus XM will be like measured value X will be equal true X value it will be the whole matrix plus uh, um, normal distributed error. Plus, uh, I will use norm uh, RND function which generates random uh, values. Uh, I will use mean value 0 uh, as standard deviation. We will use 10 meters. Okay, standard deviation 10 meters uh, for 300 meters measuring this. Okay. And then we need to specify size of matrix, uh, one uh, row and uh, num number of elements in matrix X. Uh, in this case, we will get uh, X measured values. Also quite important, uh, I hope you remember that uh, if you would like to simulate uh, measuring, we can put X uh, in mean value. Or we can use X plus norm RD. Or we can put it here. It is up to you how you uh, would like. How you like code it. And uh, then I think we can uh, try to code uh, alpha beta filter uh, algorithm. And uh, Everyone usually asks me from which point we will start to code algorithm. Um, I think in this case uh, everything is quite easily understandable. Uh, we've got many measure measurements and I it is iteration of these measurements. Thus, we will use uh, a global loop for, which will change our interactions uh, for measuring value. And inside of this loop, uh, we've got three switches, uh, each which will switch between different conditions: iteration one, iteration two, iteration more than three. And 
probably that's all. Um, uh, thus, uh, we will start uh, from uh, creating loop form. Just a second. Okay. Thus, uh, let's use loop form and uh, variable of loop will be i, as in my algorithm. And uh, I we will change from one to number of elements in matrix X. Also, please uh, try to remember or use it as rule. If you use four, if you type four, we always need type to end. Okay. Thus we complete our loop. Then we will create a switch if. And the first condition if i will equal 1. Uh, also, if we will type if, we need to close it by n. Please do not forget that uh, in MATLAB double equal we need to use in case if it is logical operation. If you would like to compare i with some other values, we use double equal. Uh, next, we need to type our first formula for case when i is equal 1. And in this case, it will be xf, okay, maybe x filtered uh, from i will be equal x measured from i. As we've got in our algorithm. Also, I will put semicolon at the end because uh, we need to speed up our process a little bit. Uh, do not print, print it in command window, thus just semicolon everything that we have in the loop. Next, uh, we can add else if uh, and uh, we need to specify another case when i is equal to. Also, please uh, be careful. Uh, do not put, do not put uh, space between else and if. In uh, if construction, uh, else if it is one word without any spaces. And here we need to type uh, two form, two lines. Uh, this we need to repeat same line from previous one, and uh, we can count velocity. And velocity will be, let, let it be just v, uh, v from i will be equal, and uh, here we can specify x, uh, x f from 2 uh, minus x filtered from 1 and divide it by capital T, capital A. Um, that's all. Let's go next. Next, it will be else, all other cases that we have. And here we will put uh, all other formulas that we have in uh, our red line of our algorithm. And uh, we need to start from uh, entering alpha and beta conditions. Thus, uh, we can type a uh, from i is equal uh, uh, to multiply with uh, uh, to multiply with i uh, minus one. Yep, and then we can divide it by, uh, we can divide it, we can divide it by uh, i uh, multiply with uh, i plus 1, i plus 1. Okay, we've got it. Just a second, yep. And uh, next uh, we can count b, b from i will be equal uh, 6 divide 
pi uh, t multiply with i multiply with i plus 1. Okay, we've got it. That's this box already done in our code. Next, we need to add uh, three lines from the next box. I will put some uh, empty line to separate alpha beta coefficients with the body of uh, filter. And here we will type x extrapolated from i uh, is equal x x filtered uh, from i minus 1 i minus 1 plus uh, velocity i minus 1 uh, multiply with the p. In uh, my code here on t i minus t i minus 1, uh, it means like universal approach. In our case, we've got t period uh, of a period time of between measuring, thus we just can use t here. And uh, filtered value, then we can count also easily. Filtered value uh, from i is equal uh, x extrapolated from i uh, plus uh, I will put like like this one, and then I will use alpha coefficient multiply with uh, uh, measured value x measured value from i uh, minus uh, x extrapolated from i and we've got formula for filter value already done then velocity velocity from i is equal velocity from i minus 1 uh, plus uh, beta coefficient from i Okay, I will use like special brackets here. Uh, multiplied with uh, the same that we have here already done. Uh, divided by t. Okay, we've got it. Velocity already here. And finally, we need uh, to quote final box with uh, mean value estimation. Thus, we can type like s uh, s from one. Okay, let it be s x from i is equal the same that we have for alpha coefficient multiply with the sigma uh, x. Thus, I will copy. Okay, I don't want copying. Because it is the same, I will use just alpha coefficient multiply with the s, which is equal 10 meters in our case. Because we use a standard deviation 10 meters here. Thus, 10 meters here we need to put here. And uh, sigma v, I don't want to count it. Because uh, velocity it is not our task for today. Our task it is uh, filtering of air pump trajectory. Uh, and we've got our code for simulation uh, filtering process. Next, let's uh, see uh, what we have in result. I will scroll a little bit, then uh, I will uh, put Figure, figure, and uh, I will use uh, properties name to specify uh, a title of our figure, like alpha beta filtering. Okay, uh, I've got it. Then uh, I can use plot uh, to plot uh, measured value. And uh, I will use 
LBR. Okay. Yep. Uh, then uh, I just probably copy this one and thus just paste it here. Then it will be extrapolated value. OB. Uh, I will use circles with a block color. And uh, the third one, it will be a filtered value. X filtered value uh, will be like final line uh, marked by squared uh, green. Okay. And uh, let's add some title. Title and uh, we will specify, oh, sorry, we will specify like uh, alpha, alpha, uh, beta, filtering. I will use, uh, I am using hashtag alpha and beta to get like Greek letters alpha and beta in title. And uh, finally, uh, let's add x label, x label, and y label. In x label, it is time in seconds. In y label, in y label, it is x. X in meters in our case. Get two kind of brackets. And a legend. We will have three lines. Thus, a legend is quite uh, useful here. The first value it is measured. Uh, the second one will be uh, extrapolated. And uh, the third one will be filtered. Uh, and also let uh, add grid on. Okay, and probably we can start to see what we have. If we run it, Run it. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, I think uh, we will change uh, a little bit. I will um, uh, remove T from our beta formula. Thus, uh, I will remove. T here because uh, it looks uh, not not in the way how it should be. Okay, and now we've got results uh, that I would like to share with you. Thus, uh, there are some limitations from a value of T. In case if uh, we use valuable time period 6 seconds, um, T is not welcome to use in beta formula. Uh, if we zoom a little bit our results, we will see that our measurements are randomly distributed over our trajectory. Then, if we zoom a little bit. Okay, we will see that uh, extrapolated value is located much more in linear like form, and then filtered will be between measured and extrapolated, and the result 
that we have, we've got uh, four cases of very valuable like uh, standard deviation because uh, 10 meters standard deviation in uh, 300 uh, maximum value it is it is very valuable for uh, for distribution of random variables that's why uh, we can see that alpha beta filter works uh, correct and we've got uh, like great result for applying this filter uh, also uh, also quite important that uh, you will see that of course it is not linear and at the initial stage alpha beta filter uh, has been tuned for input data and after the tuning process it became much more stable and we've got uh, uh, quite good result of filtering or maybe excellent result of filtering uh, okay next uh, let's plot uh, a few graphs for error uh, estimation of radar and for alpha and beta coefficients uh, next, uh, let's plot alpha and beta coefficients distribution. Thus, figure. Also, uh, I will use figure, just maybe copy uh, properties and uh, alpha beta coefficients. Yes. And uh, here uh, I would like to plot, okay, maybe I just copy everything that I have here. Uh, I just put it here and I will change xm to a and xe to b. It will be alpha coefficient and beta coefficient. And also I will use line here and line here. Then uh, title of our figure uh, I am also change to alpha and beta coefficients. Then here it will be in axis label will be time in seconds, and in y label it will be alpha beta in a percentage alpha beta. Maybe I will put just a comma and uh, in legend uh, first is r thus. First one it is alpha, and the second one is beta. So I will use just beta. Okay, and uh, next uh, let's plot errors of alpha beta filter because we've got Sx here. Thus it will be standard deviation. So maybe alpha beta filter. Uh, STD or standard deviation. Uh, also, I will put the same description in my title and uh, SX will be here. Uh, this data we do not need. And uh, here we need to put uh, stigma. Uh, stigma. Uh, stigma uh, by x axis in meters. Uh, legend also we do not need. And uh, also quite important that in our simulation we know true value of our x. Thus we can estimate measured error and momental errors because each time we've got only one measurement. Thus, we can estimate like momental error in each measurement. Uh, and how we can do it? Quite easily. We've got true value, thus we can just find difference between 
measured and true value and between filtered and true value. And uh, as a result, we've got two dependencies for momental errors. And finally, we can see how good alpha beta filter. Uh, okay, to do that, I also copy uh, my plotting construction and maybe it will be alpha beta errors. Uh, I will put the same it the same for better okay filter errors this may be filter I will add here and uh, what we need uh, we just need to to count uh, absolute value absolute value between true value and uh, xm, which is measured value, and uh, I will copy it and put it here, and between true value and filtered value. And first one, let it be red one, the next one uh, should be green. And, uh, okay, errors, time. And uh, let it be not sigma, let it be just errors, because it is momental errors in meters. And also we can add a legend here, there are two of them. The first one will be uh, measured well errors, or errors of measurements. And errors of filtering. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Thus, if we run again our code, let's check what kind of graphs we will have. Okay. Maybe one more time. We probably have got mistake somewhere. Let me check it. Line 48. Okay, I forget semicolon, sorry. Let's run it. And here we are. We, we have our graphs. Just a second. Thus, first graph, it is our true value, measured value, extrapolated value and filtered value. The second graph it is alpha beta coefficient. Oh no 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 sorry this is the second one alpha beta coefficient and uh, here we've got like uh, we've got some fault because uh, first two elements in matrix alpha and beta we do not have. Thus we, we need just to fix it. And uh, all, also standard deviation for first two values we also do not have. Thus we need to fix uh, two of these graphs. Thus uh, it happened because uh, we count Sx only in else and at the first two stages we do not have uh, as x and also we do not have x extrapolated and x filtered. Thus, um, it will be uh, much more better if we just use it at particular size or at particular like uh, iteration from third one 
to the final. And then we can copy it and paste it anywhere where we need to cut it. Uh, at the coefficient graph, at the filtered value graph, and filtered errors. Okay, here it is not visible. If you simulate our graph, uh, we've got following results. Thus, our data, our alpha and beta coefficients, our standard deviations, and our errors. Uh, okay, uh, alpha beta coefficients, you will see that it is always less than 1. Alpha uh, is the red line here, and uh, alpha will be reduced uh, as the same with the beta if iteration will be increased. However, beta will be start from uh, 0. 0.5 and uh, alpha will start from approximately 1 and will be reduced. Then, standard deviation. Uh, here I would like to focus you that uh, at the initial stage we've got 10 here or standard deviation of measured value x is equal to 10. Thus, it will be reduced according to the dependence of alpha coefficient. And uh, result of alpha beta filtering process, you can see quite uh, quite good in our error graph. And in this case, red line, it is result of uh, momental errors uh, after measuring process. And the green line here, it is result of error of filtering. Thus, uh, we can see that at the first time, filter has been tuned. And after this time, uh, filter gives quite precise results. However, in most cases, uh, usage of alpha beta filter is uh, important because uh, it will reduce errors significantly. That's why alpha beta filter works and it is useful in particular condition. However, as you can see, all that we simulate here, it is like ideal situation or particular case. Let's try to study alpha beta filter operation in real air plane trajectory data and let's see how it will be in real situation when we've got latitude and longitude and what we need to do with latitude and longitude to get uh, filtered values. Uh, however, before we will start, uh, I think uh, better will be if we try to minimize our code a little bit and uh, create a specific function for alpha and beta filter uh, separately uh, and it helps us to uh, run our alpha beta filter for latitude and longitude for both data uh, two times without like copying a big part of code. Thus, uh, I just would like to create, uh, just would like to copy our our loop for which we have. Thus, I just control C it. Uh, then I will create 
view or maybe it will be better if I use like new function just a second just a second I will put it here. Yep, it will be our function in MATLAB. Then I will put my loop in this uh, function and uh, then uh, let this function will be called alpha beta filter plus I just type alpha beta filter AB filter. Yep. Then uh, I will uh, use as output of my filter will be filtered value and extrapolated value because uh, we need like a, a graph with extrapolated and filtered value. And as input it will be x and t. What we need inside of our uh, alpha beta filter? Okay, sorry, maybe not x, x measured. Here it will be x measured. Okay, iteration will be start. And also we need t. Thus we need count uh, t from uh, t. Uh, uh, thus, I think uh, we can count t to minimize input, and it will be uh, t. We will try to do it in matrix form from second to end minus uh, t from one to uh, end minus one uh, end minus one yep uh, yep it will be end minus one yes it will work and uh, then uh, we've got a loop uh, we've got loop uh, which we have however probably as x we do not need can remove this one. Okay. And probably that's all. Let's save it. Uh, I will save it at the same folder. And then uh, we, we can use uh, this line to ask alpha beta filter uh, and And we do not need to repeat uh, this cycle in our code. Thus, I will save it. If you do not want uh, to create it, you can already download alpha beta filter function from my website in code uh, or script, uh, like uh, link in my website. So that's why you do not need to code it. You can uh, download it from the source, which you can see uh, below this video. Thus, uh, in my case, I will save it, uh, then I can close it, and uh, then we will continue. And uh, for the second part, it will be absolutely another part. Uh, I will check the broke of my code and uh, here I will start from clear bars because we do not need our previous data then I will use also CLC and then we will uh, type uh, absolutely another side of our code with the real data real data 
processing. Uh, however, first of all, let's try to find data which we can use for, uh, for data processing. And uh, in my case, uh, I think you know that uh, in most time I use flight aware uh, website. Uh, which uh, give us access to the tons of airplanes trajectories and uh, let uh, use DLH 1125. It will be Lufthansa flight and um, we just uh, go to the trajectory and you will see that this is flight from Barcelona to the Frankfurt and uh, we will use this trajectory uh, for filtering with the help of alpha beta filter. How we can uh, grab this trajectory in MATLAB? Uh, let's go to the view track log. Okay, we are already here. Uh, then we can copy the table. Okay, I just begin and then scroll a little bit down and then uh, select all the table with airplane trajectory and then click Ctrl C. Ctrl C. I have copied in my clipboard. Then uh, I will come back to MATLAB. Yep, it is here. Then I just uh, make clear all in my workspace. Thus I've got clear clear workspace. And then I just uh, uh, use right click and then use paste in workspace from my clipboard. Then we are waiting a few seconds and a specific wizard of importing data will be launched. Okay, we've got. Uh, here you will see the table that we copied. And uh, here what we've got. Uh, first line, it will be our timeline. I will call it T. Second line, it will be latitude. Third line is longitude. And uh, this line is altitude. Alt will be. Uh, first line includes time in like specific data time format. In this case, we need to change uh, type of data from textual data to the data time. However, data time as we've got in this column, it is specific data time format. And uh, this data form type format is triple E space, then hours, then minutes, then seconds, and a. If we uh, enter, you will see that data time properties has been recognized uh, very well. Uh, next, we need just to select which column we would like to export. Then also, it will be great if you scroll it down to see if you've got some red, uh, red cells. It means that we've got some problems here. If you do not have any problems, all cells uh, are blue, then we can click Import. And here you are, we've got uh, in our workspace uh, our four matrices with altitude in feet, okay, with lat latitude in degrees, with longitude in degrees, and with uh, time. Also quite important that, please do not forget that it is data time property. 
Next, uh, I would like to save this workspace. I will use right click, uh, Ctrl S or save. And then I will save it at the same folder where we are. And I just called it uh, DLH. DLH1125 and you will see that uh, it will be a specific MAT file which includes uh, saved workspace and uh, you will see that in current folder we've got uh, DLH1125.mat Next uh, we can come back to our code where it is Okay. okay, this here, and then uh, we can use. Oh, sorry, I closed it. Okay, and then we can easily uh, load uh, saved uh, trajectory. In MATLAB, we have function load, and uh, what we need just specify title of this file. And if you remember, it is dlh1125.mat. And MATLAB will load these four matrices with latitude, longitude, altitude, and time. And then we can process this data. Uh, next, uh, quite important that altitude we've got in fix. Thus, we need to transform it to meters. Uh, how to do it? The easiest way to multiply with uh, uh, point forty uh, forty, and we will get uh, our altitude in meters. Then uh, let's input uh, matrix airports, airports, and uh, inside of this matrix we've got identification codes of uh, airports which we've got. The first one it is uh, Lee. E B L and uh, the second one is E D D F. Uh, this is two identification cores of airports. And probably before we will start, uh, let's try to print our graph. Uh, in order to minimize time, I just uh, copy from uh, another code uh, the part of code which includes uh, latitude limits calculation uh, and longitude limits calculation, then uh, identification of uh, figure. Here we just need to change identification code from uh, label to EDDBF. ED, EDDF. Uh, uh, next, we will use world map function, which is a part of mapping toolbox in MATLAB. Then we specify let link long link. In this case, um, world map function will create specific projection for latitude and longitude data representation and then we just easily use the geoshow function uh, to specify latitude and longitude of airplane trajectory and it will be marked by red color with a marker star because star is usually associated with the measured values then uh, next we will use text m function to specify airports thus a text M, we specify first airport, and then we use text M to specify the second airport. And also we can put title with uh, our particular connection. Uh, next, let's run this section. Uh, I would like to memorize you that we can use control enter to evaluate current section and we do not need to resimulate all the code and finally we will have something like that airplane trajectory okay we can come back to flight aware open it 
in uh, visualization to tool of light aware and then uh, we can open our trajectory in MATLAB and you can see that uh, connection between airport in Spain and uh, Frankfurt airport uh, looks the same in our MATLAB environment. Uh, thus, next we can uh, continue data processing. And in my case, I would like to uh, transform latitude and longitude to the uh, north is down reference frame, and then we will work with the metrical or Cartesian reference frame, which is uh, much more useful because we will get like uh, velocity, we will get hidden angles, everything can be counted quite easily from net reference frame. Uh, okay, uh, however, first of all, we need to uh, play a little bit with the time, because uh, our time, uh, it is data time format, and we will need to transform it uh, to the particular sequence in seconds and create a matrix of these seconds. Uh, to do that, I will use uh, for loop uh, and I will be iteration inside of this loop and it will be from 2 to number of elements uh, in a latitude matrix. If you use for loop, always we need to put end. And then uh, uh, we just uh, calculate our time. Uh, from i will be equal to e time, e time, and inside of e time uh, function we will operate with data vector, data vector from t i, uh, and and data vector from T1. E time will count difference in seconds between uh, two times. Uh, first time in our matrix T and the all other times. That's why we use uh, such construction. Uh, next, uh, we can uh, go to the coordinate transformation from uh, latitude longitude to ECEF reference frame. If you remember in MATLAB, okay, in my version of MATLAB, I do not have direct function for transformation from latitude longitude to net. That's why uh, I will transform at first to the ECEF and then XYZ from uh, ECAF to the uh, net reference frame. Uh, thus, in this case, uh, 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 we will count P is equal LLR to ECEF, and then uh, we will use uh, in the, it, we will use uh, latitude, longitude, altitude. Bravo. Just a second. Uh, also, we need to specify uh, reference frame VGS84. Okay, I will save it. And then... Uh, okay, just a second. Okay. Uh, thus, yes, 
everything is correct and uh, then uh, we've got matrix P which includes X, Y, Z of uh, our airplane trajectory from the center of our ears. And then uh, I just would like to extract our uh, X, it will be X ECF from matrix P. And it will be P uh, first column. All lines first column. And then we will do the same for Y and Z. Y it will be second column and Z it will be third column. Uh, next uh, we can transform from uh, ECF to NET, however we need to specify uh, VGS84. I just copy it from uh, MATLAB help. Uh, thus, uh, I will use VGS84 and I will apply VGS84 ellipsoid function to prepare like uh, input environment. And it means that all data we've got in meters. And uh, next, uh, we can apply ETF to net function. In this case, we specify that X, Y, and Z it will be our output, and then ECF to net uh, X ECF comma Y ECF uh, Z ECF and then uh, I will use like minimum value from latitude, uh, minimum value from longitude, and zero value of altitude. It will be our reference point for a net reference frame. VGS84. Uh, Okay, and uh, here we are, everything is ready, we can uh, plot our graph, uh, thus first of all, uh, I don't want to copy plotting function, thus I just copy it from uh, already prepared text. Okay, thus it will be a horizontal part of a net reference frame. Uh, in this case, uh, we will plot Y from X. Uh, y from Y. Oh. Sorry, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> I already forget that I've got it here. Thus, it, it will be uh, markers of airports, uh, and this one, it will be our trajectory in net. And then, uh, with the help of text function, where we specify coordinates of uh, first and final point, and we will specify airports matrix. Thus, it will be marked. Uh, titles of uh, airports and notification codes. Uh, then title, uh, X label, it will be east uh, in net reference frame and uh, Y label, it will be X north. Also quite important that uh, I, will, I will switch from meters to kilometers, thus I will multiply everything with uh, 10 minus 3 to reduce number of data at the final picture. And then if we run it with the help of control enter, I will run uh, current section. Uh, I've got the following results. Just a second. Yep, I've got it. 
Thus, in my uh, net reference frame, our trajectory looks like this one. And in this case, it is a light path of real airplane trajectory. Thus, it is light path of airplane trajectory. Uh, next, let's apply our alpha beta filtering for some part of this trajectory. As you remember, if we apply alpha beta filter for the whole trajectory, it doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Why? Because this trajectory is not linear and uh, airplane is moving with a particular acceleration, especially during the takeoff and landing, and it introduces uh, a huge errors in the result of filtering. Thus, alpha beta filtering at the whole airplane trajectory doesn't make any sense. Therefore, uh, we will cut some part of trajectory. Okay, let me introduce matrix cut. And I will specify like time frame for which we will cut. Uh, let it be from 100 to 150. And then we can apply our function of alpha beta filtering. Uh, if you remember, we applied x uh, filtered value, x extrapolated value uh, is equal to our new function alpha beta filter. And uh, as input in our matrix, we use uh, x cut value. And uh, we need uh, to use time, also cut value. Uh, and uh, we need to do the same for y axis, our net reference frame. Yep, and enter what? Everything that we need. Let's run it because uh, here we can have uh, some probably mistakes. Thus, we need to check if you have any problems in our simulation. Just a second. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have a problem where, okay, in, in line 9 of alpha beta filter. Uh, just a second, uh, alpha beta filter, let's open. In ninth line of alpha beta filter function, uh, we've got mistake. And probably it is because we need to put point here. Okay. Just a second, I will try to find alpha beta filter function. Yup. Okay, just a second, it is here. Yup, exactly. T, uh, T from I. Here we need to change it because T, it is not T, it is matrix in our case. Okay, T from I. And here, t from i. t from i. Or i's element of matrix t. Okay, let it save. And let it run again. We need to wait a few seconds. Okay, we have a mistake in line 14, alpha beta filter. Just a second, let's check what we have in line 14. Okay, just a second, there it is. Line 14, uh, index exceed matrix dimension. Yeah, 
probably at the final stage. P minus one, P minus one, and P minus one, because it should be previous one. Control S, and let's run it again. Let's run it again. And now we do not have any commands from MATLAB. Thus, it looks that we are uh, we are correct. Uh, I don't. Okay. Thus, I can close alpha beta filter. Uh, and uh, also, I do not want to type uh, visualization. I just copy it from another source and just. Uh, modify it a little bit uh, to get the data which we need, which we require. Okay. Uh, what I have here, thus I create new figure, uh, then I plot uh, I plot uh, the whole airplane trajectory. Thus, I plot. Oh no, sorry. Uh, I just plot first and final points of uh, our trajectory and uh, mark it uh, as a, a blue square. Then I put text with the titles of airport, and then I plot. Uh, results of our filtering. First of all, uh, we plot X and Y data. It is a pure net data. Uh, next, uh, I will plot extrapolated data. And finally, I plot a filtered value. Thus, extrapolated will be uh, blue and uh, filtered will be green. Then uh, I create specific variable p uh, and put the plot in matrix p. And then I will use uh, guided legend because if I just applied legend, I, I will need to specify like uh, for uh, airport identification uh, marker markers. That's why uh, I will specify p. And then uh, uh, I will set up like titles for legends from P. And here I've got measured, extrapolated, and filtered trajectories. Then I will put title, then X label, Y label, and grid. And now we can run everything from the beginning and we will see how it works. Okay, what we have here? Uh, this is our horizontal uh, figure, which we got from previous one, and uh, this is our final. Uh, we will choose uh, to use alpha beta filter from uh, 100 iteration to 150. That's why you will see that uh, our uh, result of filtered filtering is located somewhere here. That's why we can zoom a little bit, probably this part, uh, to see what's going on with the filtering process. And uh, you will see that when we've been at the linear part, everything works properly. However, aircraft change trajectory, uh, our uh, extrapolation will be following more closer to the uh, previous uh, trajectory of aircraft. And it makes deviation of filtered value from uh, measured value and from true airplane trajectory. That's why um, 
filtering of airplane trajectory with the help of alpha beta filter can be done only at the linear parts between waypoints. At their uh, at their like time of uh, changing heading of aircraft or changing the track uh, usage of alpha beta filter is not welcome because in this case it doesn't make any sense because it will be absolutely different from real airplane trajectory. Uh, if we consider linear part, you will see that prediction and a result of alpha beta filter is quite good and if we increase it uh, like that, you will see that the prediction of alpha beta filter is quite 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 good and we can use alpha beta filter however only in linear parts of airplane trajectory and uh, only in case of uh, zero acceleration or near the zero acceleration and in this case it works it makes sense Uh, okay, and uh, finally, uh, I would like to simulate everything again to show you uh, which uh, figures we will have at the end of our simulation. If you remember, at the beginning, we apply at the stage when we simulate airplane movement and it gives us possibility to estimate errors of airplane of alpha beta filtering. Next uh, we use next we use uh, real airplane trajectory from some airport in Spain uh, to airport in Frankfurt, Germany to, uh, to use alpha beta filtering at particular uh, parts of this trajectory and uh, we will see that at the linear uh, parts of this trajectory we can use uh, however with some restriction okay uh, what we can summarize that alpha beta filter in ideal gives quite good uh, filtering uh, in case if we can look uh, on the errors because it will really reduce errors in some particular case. Uh, and uh, in case of uh, applying it in ATC, yes, it is useful, why not? However, we need to introduce specific algorithm of trajectory detection. There are a few algorithms uh, and different approaches uh, which can be used here to identify if airplane is change uh, direction or, or hidden of flight. If uh, airplane check hidden during the enroll stage, we need to switch or we need to like uh, uh, we need to like come back in alpha and beta coefficients and then we can continue extrapolation. Thus in this case also uh, we do not need to like break trajectory into the small five, uh, parts. We, we, can, uh, we can improve this problem at the level of alpha beta coefficients 
because if you remember alpha and beta works with uh, uh, how close we are to the measured values and if you remember uh, at the beginning of filtering alpha is high which makes a filtered value close to measured that's why if heading of aircraft is uh, ch uh, changed uh, we do not need to change tracking we just need to break alpha and beta iteration and start it from zero and in this case alpha beta filter will be tuned uh, for new trajectory and in two uh, like two or three iterations alpha beta filter will be totally tuned for new trajectory that's why if we need to apply it in a real case uh, first of all we need to select an road phase of flight only because in this case acceleration approximately the same equal to zero uh, next we need to apply a specific algorithm uh, to detect uh, changing of uh, airplane uh, heating and if heating is uh, changed we need to uh, make uh, alpha and beta coefficient uh, equal to first iteration and then we will start uh, like alpha beta filtering from one however all of that uh, can be solved in alpha beta gamma filter thus alpha beta gamma filter is much more welcome in this case however the place of alpha beta also can be here however we need to apply um, a little bit more functions to get uh, quite good or quite precise results thus uh, thank you very much for watching me if you have uh, any questions you always can ask me and i will try to answer when i have time Thus, uh, thank you very much for watching me. Uh, hope to see you again. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.